Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial where I'll give you a quick overview of Fraps in Sony Vegas by going through the basics of recording, editing, and rendering. So, in order to record, you have to use a recording software, which in this case is Fraps. So, t in order to get the best possible quality for your in game clips, you can choose full size recording. But note that this requires a pretty beastly computer unless you want to play with la with insane lags. Um, when it comes to the frames per rate, uh, you should choose 29.97 uh, as that is the highest frames per rate uh, that YouTube supports. Which means that if you take anything higher, YouTube only can press it and make it down to 29.97 again. Uh, when you want to record sound, you can choose stereo, and depending on whatever you want to record your microphone, you can tick that record external input, which will record your microphone. Um, in the newest version of uh, Fraps, there is also this new handy feature called loop recording, and what it does is that Fraps will constantly record but it won't save to your hard drive unless you save it uh, which in this case can for example be the predefined amount of or number of 30 seconds so what you do is that you hold down the recording button and then for example if you get a really good frag you can click the recording button again and then it will only save the last 30 seconds and this will be a really space saving uh, since you do not have to have entire rounds uh, on your hard drive. So now that you record your clip, you can use Sony Vegas to edit or render it, render the clip. So the first thing you obviously have to do is to simply open the clip and put it into Sony Vegas. Then you have to go on File and Properties and here you can change the width and height of your video so the settings which I have is 1920 x 1080 and I'll put the frame rate down to 29.97 um, I change the full resolution rendering quality to best and I click apply and one thing that you might notice then is that you can see some black bars on the side of the footage that you have and that is because the native resolution of the footage is smaller than the, f uh, than the resolution size that I put up here in the properties tab so in order to fill it, fill out the entire screen, you go on Event Pan slash Crop, and you go on Maintain Aspect Ratio, and you change it to No. What then will happen is that the video will fill out, and it will pretty much remove the black bars. And a little tip I can give is that often when you make montages, you will have several small clips. So doing this process on every single clip can be quite annoying uh, so there's a little method you can use by let's see I can open a new clip and as you can see this one will still have the black bars on the side so we then can do is that you can go here right click select events to end you can right click again then you can go on switches and you can click this little thing here maintain aspect ratio so if I click it one time and then I click it again you can see that this clip will have the black bars removed and this will then work on all the clips you have and this will be very time saving so now that you've prepared your clip uh, you can start making uh, an intro uh, by doing that you can right click text media uh, and you can write in your text. Take for example, Sony Vegas. 
uh, as you can see here. Uh, now you can, for example, add some text effects by going to properties, take that on black, go on effects, go on draw outline, take for example black, oh I'm sorry, I mean white, and decrease the feather, and perhaps increase the width a bit. Then you can get some smooth um, outlines and you can also get some other effects by taking for example draw shadow and decreasing the X offset a bit adding it as Y perhaps increasing or decreasing the feather as you like then you can get some 3D like effects uh, now you can also add some additional effects by Xing out of this and going on the event effects. Uh, there's a lot of different effects that you can add, so you pretty much just have to experiment yourself. But some which I often use are, for example, light rays, where you go and add, okay, and it gives the text a little glow. So, what you can do then is, for example, to drag the source, the glow source from that side, click on animate, you can go to the end of your clip, and you can move that one, um, and with, uh, then you will get a sort of animation, like if you see here, X out of that one, click on Alt, Shift, and 4, space, you can see that you can get a little a type of animation, and there's a lot of other things you can add, so you just have to try yourself, really. Now that we made a, a very simple introduction, uh, you can start cutting and editing your clip. Um, so, what I will do is first, I'll try and shorten out the clip. So, I get right to the action, say about there. I'll move it to its introduction and here you will now have a transition and you can edit this transition to make it a bit more interesting just the pure fade so by doing that you can right click on the animation transition properties and then you can choose from a various different uh, effects one that I often use is flash and then you go on add and OK then you can, for example, take hard flash, and as you now can see, you'll get a sort of flashy change between the two clips. Let's see if you see here. Yeah, that was quite slow, so you can probably make it a bit slower, so it looks a bit smoother. Um, and some other things you can do is that if you click on S, click on a place in the clip and click S, you cut it. And for slow and fast motion, what you do is that you hold down CTRL, then you can drag it out to make it slow mo or make it shorter to make it uh, uh, fast motion. So one thing that I often do is I might, for example, make an explosion a bit slow. So this is very simple editing effect. So what I do is that I just scroll, I just go towards the where something happens. Here you can obviously see something is happening. So I click S, I cut the clip, then I go and there the explosion. Explosion seems to be done about there. So. I click S again, and what I can do then is that I can increase the length of the clip, and it will become slow motion. But remember that the sound of the clip will most likely be sort of twitch or really weird. So what I often do is that I go on properties, and I go on classic lock to stretch. And it looks and it sounds then the sound is pretty and you also got the clip itself and another
another thing you can do is, which I often do, is that on each of my clip I add special effects. Um, and you can click on the individual effects tab on each yeah, individual clip if you want one effect on one clip. Say, for example, I'll go on the clip where some explosion happened. I'll add a simple effect called wave. Add it. Okay. I'll put up the animation tab. I'll take it about here. I'll reset it by double clicking. Then I go here at the start. I choose, for example, a horse or shake, which is something I made myself. But what you also can do, if you want to add an effect to entire video, which you are some, which you obviously want to do with, for example, color correction effects, by doing that you can click on this track effects, and when you add effects on this line, the effects will be on every single clip. So something which I often use is sharpen. This is some. This is an effect I add on all my clips, and it makes the line more sharper and a bit more clear. Another effect I often use is bump map, which, uh, which I changed a lot from the default one. I made my own, which I called blah. And as you can see, it adds some, it adds uh, some sort of darkish edges. Well, it also makes the mid a bit more. It sort of folk makes the focus more in the middle. This was the effect I used in my la last montage, Airborne Assault. Uh, airborne, yeah. <laughs> so, as you can see here, you can see that the clip looks a bit cooler. So, if you want to see it work. a bit brighter and it's a pretty neat effect that I often use and now that I'm done editing the clip I will start rendering it so what I do is then I'm going to file render as I choose main concept AVC slash AAC MP4 then I go in custom and here it's important that you choose the same width and height as you put on your uh, properties tab, I allowed source to adjust the frame size. The profile is main. The frame rate should be 29.97 fra uh, frames per second. Then, uh, and some of the most important parts is I, I take in the variable bitrate, 14 million. On maximum and average is 12 million. The number of reference frames is 2 with deep blocking filter. On audio, I haven't really changed anything, but on project, I've taken best. Then you can click OK. So, then all thing you just do is rename it to say um, Ruffle and simply click Save. So now this one will render and I'll put it up uh, as a response to this tutorial so you can see how it ended. If you have any questions feel free to write it in the comments below.